Oh! <laughs> you got shocked. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I heard it. It's nothing. It's really nothing. That's interesting. I might do it. They, they got me good. <laughs> Hi, Gloria. This here is Gloria Buttons, our new pony out of the ranch. Hey, welcome back to From Scratch Ranch. Uh, just when I get this pasture all fenced in, the fence completed, stained, post tops cut off, the shelter, completed, tack shed added on, all done. Kristen and Michaela decided to go and get another pony, Glory Buttons. She's great. But now we have three horses, two, ho or two ponies and one horse on this one acre pasture. And it's just not big enough for that many horses. So I do have plans to put another fenced in wood fence pasture there, just like this one right here, four board wood fence over on that section over there. Um, but that's not gonna be for a while. Lumber prices are just crazy right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a temporary or semi-permanent uh, electric fence over there in that grassy area over there. And I'm gonna use some panels, metal panels that I've had. I've got about eight panels and then um, extend it out with T-posts and electrified ribbon all the way around some poly tape. All right, I think I got everything I need right here. I've got, well, Remy wanting to help. <laughs> Right here, I've got my um, T-posts. So I've got the bucket full of T-posts there. And then here, I've got all of the metal panels that I have left over that we were using for a paddock. So I'm gonna use those as kind of one side with some gates to get into the, to the uh, new pasture area. And then I have all my supplies over here for the electric fence. This is the electric fence controller, which is a solar paneled um, controller, so I don't have any power out here, so that's important. This is a five mile version, which is plenty for the space that I'm doing up here. It also uh, mounts on top of a T-post, which is convenient. So these are the T-post poly tape insulators. Got plenty of those, they clip right onto the T-post, and this is where we connect the poly tape to, the ribbon, electrified ribbon. And here's the electrified ribbon right here. So I've got uh, two inch for the top the top uh, ribbon that I'm gonna put across. So that's 500 feet, I'm only need about 300 feet of that. And then I've also got some one and a half inch here and I've got two 300 and something feet uh, rolls of that that I had left over from another project. So I'm gonna use those. So maybe three ribbons, three kind of rails of electrified ribbon. And since I've got uh, three ribbons going, I've got three uh, poly taped energizer connectors. So this is what connects to the uh, fence controller, the electric fence controller, and then onto the clamps onto the tape. And I got three of them because then it goes from one ribbon down to the next ribbon down to the next ribbon. So I've got three of those. And then also I've got uh, some ground rod clamps. So these are the clamps that go onto the ground rods, which I have right here. And I need three ground rods spaced 10 feet apart according to the instructions. These are eight footers. So I'm gonna have to drive those down into the ground pretty far. Hopefully I can do it, there's a lot of rock here. Um, but these uh, clamps go on those uh, rods and then I connect the wire to it. And here's the wire. This is a 12 and a half gauge uh, outdoor underground uh, wire that will connect from the controller down to the ground rods and then from ground rod to ground rod to ground rod and then clipped in with these clamps here. Some of the tools I've got uh, are the T-post driver there. So we've got 30 something T-posts I'm gonna be putting in and then also a sledgehammer to pound the um, ground rods further into the ground. I'll use the T-post driver to get it started and then use the sledgehammer to get that down all the way into the ground. And then I've got a 100 foot tape so that way I can space out all the T-posts evenly. I think I'm gonna do about 10 foot uh, spacing on those. And then I've also got a mason line so we can string a line uh, from corner to corner and that way all our T-posts can be uh, you know, straight, not straight line. And then lastly, I've got the, uh, the uh, water trough. So had to pick up a second water trough to put into the new pasture area, which is gonna go over here for the horses. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is unload all of these metal panels and lay them out on this line right here 
So that way it's the line facing the existing pasture and the tack shed and all that. And I'm gonna put the gates on that and that's gonna be my anchor line that I will then anchor the electric fence to. So I'm gonna lay these all out this way and I'm gonna put one panel going the perpendicular to the main fence line uh, to kind of give it some strength in the corners there. And that's gonna be my anchor for this whole fence system. Look who's coming to help! Perfect timing. So this one, I'm coming at a perpendicular angle to that one. It's gonna be a strength in my corners. Wanna help me? Grab that in. <laughs> We're gonna just put over there. On, the, on that end over there. Right here. Keep going. Straight this way, straight line. Keep going. Easy as that. Hundred feet right there. Okay, I finally got the metal panels exactly where I need them, where I want them, in line with that other fence over there. I want this to look good, right? So I've got everything kind of lined up, repositioned exactly as I want it. Um, these two fences kind of funnel in to where the shelter's at, where the barn's gonna go. Uh, so this is kind of giving me an idea of what we're gonna eventually do once the barn comes in here. We'll move the round pen. Um, and then the opening, the gates to go into this pasture. What I need to do here is I've put my tape down for 100 feet and my mason line I've, I've strung. And every 10 feet, I'm gonna put a T-post in on this straight line to that corner. So that's what we're doing next. Okay, so I'm gonna put a, uh, I've got a few eight footers in there and the five footers. A few eight footers, I'm gonna put an eight footer here. Kind of like my anchor T-post to hold this end of this metal panel in. Yep, that's an eight footer there. Okay, before I pound this T-post in, one important thing to note before you start pounding in all the T-posts is the insulator clip and which way the T-post needs to face. So that means this T-post needs to go on the inside, the nubs on the inside of the fence line, like so. So that way that tape, that poly tape, is on the inside of the pasture. Okay, so this one, this was the eight footer. The others are five footers. I'm gonna have about 45 inches exposed on these five footers. So I'm gonna make sure I'm at least 45. So 51, okay, that's fine for this first one. It gives me a little extra um, support here for this fence I'm gonna tie it to. And all the other T posts will come at 45 here across the top. Okay, so 10 feet, that's what I'm looking for. I've got my tape and 10 feet right here. So I want this T-post right inside that orange line there, right at 10 feet. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly at 10 feet. I'm more, um, it's more important to be 
you know, right on that orange line. The distance between the two posts, as long as it's close to 10 feet, is fine. It'll look, it'll look fine. And again, the nub's on the inside because the insulator clip will be on the inside of the pasture. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my measuring stick. Okay, and I gotta go down about another inch or so. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, so I've got one more T-post to put over here, and that'll be my end of my line here. This this total one line all the way over there. It's gonna end here and then start curving. So I wanna put an eight foot T-post in right here, just to anchor it into the ground a little bit more to give it a little bit more strength because then the tension is gonna start pulling that way. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some T-posts in at a curve. So I'm going to kind of come out and go towards that tree line over there in a curve and then shoot along the tree line. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so that this doesn't become an, like an acute corner where the horses can come into and kind of, it's not good for them. So I want this to be rounded. It also makes it easier for me to mow on the outside of this when it's rounded like that and I can just kind of come around the, the edge of it. And by curving it like that, it'll also take off a lot of that tension off the one T-post in the corner. It'll spread it out around that curve as I get to that other straight line along the tree line there. Okay, now I'm gonna reposition my my tape to the new corner there. Come out 10 feet. So at an angle there. So it's not gonna be a perfect curve. It'll be, you know, straight lines. More like a edge of an octagon maybe. Okay, 10 feet is right there. Perfect. Put that on the outside there so I can use that to hold the line and then come to 20 feet. Add another angle inward. So right there. So I'm watching, I'm kind of eyeballing this on how I want this to go. And angled out. Okay. Okay, so I've gone down 100 feet to that corner over there from that end of that metal panel to that corner there, and then before it starts to curve. And then from there, through this curve here and through this curve here is another 100 feet. So now I need one more 100 foot section from here, curved all the way around up to that end over there. Because I'm trying to keep this to 300 feet because I've got two 300 foot sections of ribbon that I want to use and it's, you know, a perfect kind of space for this. So I know I want to maximize this to 100 foot on the edge of that panel there around to this post here. So 100 foot tape, I'm just going to take it and kind of walk it and kind of eyeball a curve and then see what happens here and adjust it as I need to. You can see it's whoop, using the grass to kind of hold it. Just need to get it kind of get close. Super close, super close. Okay, so I need to come in just a little bit. As I pull this tight, it'll bring that curve in. There we go. And if I get it to 100 feet, right there. There we go. That worked out perfect. Now I've got my line here, teeth post every 10 feet, and my curve right along that natural curve that it created as I as I walked it out. 
Yeah, that's gonna be nice. Right there. Two more to go. And this goes a lot faster when I have help. <laughs> All right, 80 feet right there. Ah. Last one. Well, second to last one. We gotta put our anchor in the, on the end there. This will be at 90 feet. You want me to do it? Okay. Yeah, this one's got to go in quite a bit more because it's a lot taller. But I'm using the taller ones to anchor the fence and see how the fence tends to lean. So I'm gonna uh, put this in so that the top is the same height. Yeah, so it's gonna go in a lot deeper, at least a foot deeper. Good enough. All right. T posts are in. Woo! Time to string the electrified ribbon. Okay, so we're gonna want three ribbons, right? We're gonna do two inch on the top, mm -hmm. then we're gonna do one inch ribbons for a, a bottom and a middle kind of ribbon, a rail. So, what's the distance that we want? So, the first one's gonna go just right on the top. Okay, so like right about there. What do you think? Should we in thirds or space differently? Like maybe at 16 inches and then 32? Yeah, so like that'll work. Why don't we do that? So on the very top, 16 inches, 32 inches. These poly tape T-post insulator clips are really easy to install, especially if it's warm outside and the plastic's really flexible. If it's cold out, that might be a little stiff and you have to work it a little bit. Um, they just clip right onto the T-post on the one end, like just like so, and then you just force it over to the other side, clip it in, and then the final clipping in is just this back part right there, and it's a little tight because it needs to be tight, and there you have it, just like that. And to take it off, you just use your thumb, push it over, and off. Simple as that. Okay. Wasn't half bad. That was pretty easy. Okay. You got 30 more to do. Yeah. I need a stick. I need a stick to put through there. Okay. Remy, find a stick. It won't fit. Nope. Oh. Darn it. Take this back. I gotta run back. Yeah. Oh, come on. Wait, wait. <laughs> Ah! You want me to try? <sighs> try what? To go find sure. Yeah, I'm out of breath. You go run. <laughs> You're making the old guy run. Yeah. Oh yeah, those definitely will fit. Um, well, the, the this dowel rod. Too weak, but this, like mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That'll work. Put the cat back on. Perfect. All right. All right. Am I the holder? You the holder. Let me hold it and you do all the hard work, okay? I don't want to hold it. No, I'm, I'm going to hold it. Oh, okay. And then you do the hard work. Okay, yeah, no. Clipping okay. it all in. All right. Okay, let's do it. So one reason we put the clips on the inside is because if, yeah, so as the horses push against it, and we'll tighten it up, they push against it, well, they're not gonna be able to push against it really because it'll, they'll get a little bit of a shock. But just in case, if they did push against it, if we had the clips on the outside, they, they, they'd bust off, yeah. Oh, 
was going quick. These are T-post corner insulator clips and they're metal brackets and they tighten on to the T-post really, really tight so you can pull tight, especially with this buckle as you wind the cable through here or the, the ribbon through here and you can pull it really, really tight and hold. And that's for a corner or for termination points. Like here, I've got a termination point where this is the end of the run or the beginning of the run. And so I wanna feed my tape through here and pull tight and use a splicer or buckle to hold the slack um, of the uh, excess and then pull tight all the way around and then terminate on the other end with the exact same thing. So these just kind of slide right over and I got to put all three of them on. This will slide all the way down and I'll tighten that up down here. The other one, the middle one, just put them all on. Like so. And then this top one. And then you just need to get a uh, small wrench and tighten this up so it's nice and snug on the T-post. All right, so before I put the ribbon through the buckle here and tighten that up, I wanna put this buckle on or the splicer. And this is going to hold the excess. So as I put this through, and I want it to be on that side, because when I put this through here, like so, and then back through this buckle, feeding it back on itself, and that will tighten up. I want to then, while it's still loose, put this one through the end here, and then back through on itself, like so. So that way, it'll hold the excess. Now, now I can tighten this. Just like so. Okay, now it's nice and tight. And then I just pull this buckle this way and that just kind of holds it in place so it's not dangling that excess there. And then just do the same thing for all three. There, that oh, looks good. And Epona joined us. Kristen brought Epona over here to test it out. It's not electrified yet, but she's pretty good just eating the grass in here. So here's the um, solar panel and the battery controller. And it came with two adapters. One, it looks like maybe for a round fence post or something to screw that onto. And then the part that comes on the back here. It does have summer, spring, fall, and winter settings. And then this just slides into the back, like so. And then this will just sit right over the T-post. So I put a T-post in right here. Um, this is where I want the controller to be. Uh, that's south, that direction over there. So I'm gonna put this on the T-post, kind of facing south. Just like that. Yeah, that's good. And then now I'll turn it on and test it to see if we're even getting power in here. I did sit this outside and charge it a bit. All right, well, I've got this voltage tester here. And so the instructions say to hook this onto the fence part, which is the hot, so that's on the hot. And then that's the ground and just turn it on and it's blinking I see it flashing I'm sure you cannot see that on the camera 
but it's flashing all the way up to the 7,000 volt. All of them are flashing. I need to hook up these uh, poly to energizer connectors. So I got three of them. And this attaches to the, to the tape. So I have to unscrew this. Okay, so since I've got to connect it then from this wire to this wire, or this tape to this tape, I'm just going to, before I put this, before I put this bolt in, I'm gonna attach the other connector to the bottom side of the top one. And I only did it on the inside ribbon, which is the longer one, because if I do need to pull this tight, I don't want to have it on both. And then this one, I'll undo the bottom one of this one. Okay, and then before I put that bolt on, I'll put my third one on. And then the bottom one, I'll just connect to the bottom tape. Okay, now, this hot wire connects to the fence hot. All right, now that's all done, the hot. Now I just need to connect the ground wire to the three rods I've got, but I gotta get those three rods into the ground 10 feet apart. Okay, so these grounding rods are eight feet tall. So I gotta pound this in eight feet. I don't know, I'm gonna get this in eight feet or not. Oh my goodness, you're supposed to go eight feet down? Yeah. <laughs> what happens if I need to pull them out? We'll see, but I need a ladder. Isn't it eight feet long already? Huh? Isn't it eight feet tall? It is, so I need a ladder. Go all the way down? Yeah. Yep, just hit my first rock. <laughs> How am I gonna do this? No, I don't think I can go down further than that. But I'm gonna let it stick out and see if it works. Why, why did I so, have to go down too far? So they gotta complete the circuit through the ground. So if the animal touches the wire, which is hot, um, if they're standing on rubber or something like that, they wouldn't get shocked. Because they gotta be touching the ground because when they touch the ground, the current will come through the ribbon into their body, through their body, through the ground, and into this, these rods that are in the ground. It'll make that connection up to the rod, up to the wire, and up to the controller, and complete the circuit, and give them a little zap. So these rods, spaced out 10 feet apart, has more kind of area for the, that distance out there. If they touch it way over there, then the current has to go through the ground from that distance way over there and reach these rods. So the ground being wet like it is, probably, you know, the better it's gonna be. But if it was like super dry and sandy, then um, you definitely need three rods. But this, this, I'm hoping that, and deep. I've already got these six feet in the, into the ground. That hopefully will be enough, we'll see. 
And that way, if I leave them high like this, I can pull them out later if we decide to move this fence or do something different here. All right, so that's two, and I got my third one. Way over here. Is there any chance that it's gonna accidentally go through the brown metal gate? No. If it's touching the metal gate in any way, that will complete that circuit and then it won't be, it'll be grounded to the ground. It'll be um, just like if grass grew up and touched this bottom ribbon, it would disrupt it and wouldn't um, complete that circuit and give them the shock. If it's touching the metal, that's why all these insulators, even on the T-posts are plastic. So that no part of this ribbon is touching the metal. So if it was touching the metal, it would just go right through the ground and complete that circuit. And the whole point is, is that all the electrified pieces are away from all the metal. There's no electrified ribbon or wire, anything touching any part of the metal. T-posts, clamps, the metal gates, anything like that. Finally, I've got these ground rod clamps that need to clamp on now this is just a temporary fence so I don't think I'm gonna be doing this permanent yet if I was doing a permanent I think I'm gonna put these poles down the rods down into the ground deeper and also maybe trench this for the wire the wire then goes into that hole there All right, this is the 12 and a half gauge wire. It's pretty thick. It's got a really thick jacket on it also because it's meant to go underground. We really gotta unwind this stuff. So this I need to curve. And this will go in that hole there and I'll tighten that screw, but I'm gonna get the other piece that's gonna go from here to there done and then I'll tighten it one time. All right. Okay, so now I got both in there. Tight the screw down on them. Okay, I'm gonna cut it with a little bit of excess so I have some room. Right. Let's test it out. All right, it's time to test it. You want to flip the switch? How do you test it? Tester? Oh, electric. Oh, okay. <laughs> this? <laughs> I was yeah. You were asking. 
asking you to come touch the wire, test yeah, it. I yeah. I didn't really want to be electrocuted. Okay, so okay. this is this is the on-off switch there. Okay. So it's in the off position now. Okay. So make sure, yep, everything looks good. All the grounding wires are connected. Okay, flip it on. Here we go. No. <laughs> so you'll see it's blinking. Oh, yeah. You can hear it ticking. Yeah. That blank tick. It's yeah. so now. This needs to go on the ground. This probe there, and then this hangs on there. Especially for this. Yep. Or is this a yep. And see, it's blinking. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's hard to see. Camera yeah. probably can't see it, but the whole thing is blinking. So that is electrified. You know who we could test it on? Remy. Yes. <laughs> Let's test it on Remy. Remy, come touch the fence. No. <laughs> so the bottom one was good. Top yeah. one's good. So all three are good. Okay. So I guess it's just a matter of waiting to see what happens when an animal touches it. Unless you want to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. No, you don't want to touch it? <laughs> we can try to get Michaela to touch it. She's a teenager. She'd be like, I'll do it. <laughs> all right. So now I'm on the opposite end, the furthest away from the controller. Yep. Yep. And yep. Okay. I think we're good. I think these ponies are going to be in for a surprise, especially the cookie, the horse. All right, you gonna test the fence out? Mm -hmm. That's really yeah. good idea. Can you tell her that it's I'm not gonna die? She's not gonna die. She's a teenager, I, well, so she needs a good jolt to the heart. That's a dumb idea. Bad idea. Why is it a bad idea? Well, if it's a bad idea for her, then it's a really bad idea for the horses. Well, you saw Cookie got shocked. She went running crazy. Yeah. Because she's a dramatic mare. Yeah. Okay, go for it. Not that I'm encouraging you. <laughs> it's sort of nervous. But, but it's not going to do anything. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you got shocked. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I heard it. It's nothing. It's really nothing. It's interesting. I'm going to have to do it. They, they got me good. <laughs> it, it didn't really, it didn't hurt though. It didn't hurt. No, I, you didn't really react at all. <laughs> okay. No, it's, it's an electric fence. No, I'm not gonna touch it. Touch it. No, touch it. Nothing. Stop! <laughs> 